understanding of GS, that's Express GS in particular, right? So I've put um, a list of what we, we are going to be covering in this video. So this is just the first video. Subsequent videos are going to follow about two or three more videos. And at the end of the whole thing, we are going to build a project, a very basic project to illustrate from development down to deployment from development to documentation to deployment of our express js app so now on the list you'll find out that we talked about package.json now once you are building a node.js application using express js framework right okay before i start now node.js is a runtime environment it's not really a programming language because everything you'll be writing in node.js or everything you'll be writing using Express.js is T JavaScript, raw JavaScript. Yes, it's just that Node.js is a runtime environment. That's it's more like an environment that helps you to run JavaScript on your server or on your terminal. Because for a an application to qualify as a backend application, right, the application needs to be run in a server. On a server environment, which of course is what Node.js is actually doing for us, right? Everything you still be writing is JavaScript. So now, before you start uh, any Node.js uh, application, so permit me to. I hope this is large enough. So let me. I uh, think I have yes have a folder here already yes so permit me to move everything inside here um, all right yes so i think the folder should be empty now good so now here anytime you want to write a a node.js application which is using the framework express.js the first thing you need to do is to get your package.json in place now this package.json i know that a lot of people will be asking that uh what's the the need of a package uh, package.json now a package.json is very important very important in the sense that everything you are going to be doing will be based on your package.json now for instance in the process of deploying your application right let's say you want to deploy it in that any other person that have access to the internet can access your application you will find out that in the process of deployment the environment you are deploying it to we need all the packages you have actually used because as of now this team want to start now by building our app on this uh, my computer anything will be installing will actually be installed on my computer and not inside the code we are writing so as such there is a need for we to include everything inside our package.json file so that by the time permitted to remove this so that by the time we are deploying it the environment will know exactly all the packages and all the modules that is needed for that particular project to run properly right good so now back to this our this thing now for we to get this package.json like i say that should be the first thing you are going to do and for you to 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 generate the package.json you just need to run your npm init command now this flag why you are seeing here is more like telling the because once you run npm init you find out that it will start asking you some couple of questions so once you include this flag why in your command it's more like you're telling it any other thing you need to ask for my permission just go ahead and do it you understand something like that so well i'm going to use this so that you see how it works so now I'll, I'll go to make sure you go to your after opening your vs code you go to your terminal then you tap on new terminal now this is my terminal so i make sure npm is installed on your system already yeah to install npm on your system using a linux you simply use uh sudo um uh, install npm yes you can use this command or you check the npm documentation on how to do that so assuming you already have npm installed on your system the next thing we need to do remember is to have npm init right so enter
so you can see package name now by default it will take the name of your directory as the package name which of course here yeah, i'll just go ahead okay version you see is asking us for the version i'm okay with this version description we we'll just say a simple let me just give it this description a simple node js application that uses express js now entry point index.js now your entry point is more like the name of your entry point entry point is more like the name of your main app like where are you kick starting your app where is your app starting from you understand more like where your main application is actually starting the main point that's where all the code you are writing we end up pointing at so that is what it means by entry point so in this case me some people normally use some people use server.js some people use index.js some people use app.js so me in this case i'm going to use app.js test command now test command like i will explain uh, all of this right with time now test command is more like if you are let's say you want to run a part you want it that anytime you run a particular command inside your terminal while in your project directly directory what you want it to do so in this case i just want it in that once uh, i run let's say my test command and it to be node node and then the name of my application dot gs yes so this 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 is the test command i want and then git repository for now i'll leave it empty keywords for now I'll leave it empty auto i'll just use um mit then license okay sorry i'm supposed to use mit the other one. but anyway so now what they are trying to say here if you don't put any other thing they will just license it to this isc which of course i'll press okay so you say is this okay of course yes so now you can see that our package.json file is being created and you can see our script you can see the test right so and all that so now let's assume that let me remove it sorry and then let's run it again npm init this time around i'll just use flag y now you'll find out that it will just go ahead to generate it without asking me all those bunch of questions and then it will fill the package.json file with default so you can see here that in this script now you can see the name version and all that so you can see that in this my script now the one they use as test anytime you run test what is going to do is that it's going to print out error no text specified so this slash here is to escape this character and this slash also is to escape this character you understand all of that is more like is so that because here we already have the whole of everything here within this code so if we do not escape this slash this slash will more like want to like be the end of this all right so now I'll, I'll take it back so this one is more like an exit one it's more like okay after you must have run this just go ahead and exit something like that all right so now let's test it let's say to run this one now of course the name is test so to run it you are going to do npm run test and you can see error no text specified you can see it error no text specified so now let's say we want to add another one let's say um um sorry no, this shouldn't be i'm supposed to be comma so let's say we want to run another one let's say we want to run um let's say we want to give you the name um def right and then def now we want to say okay uh def issue echo let's say it should echo uh, starting dev server right yes so starting dev server so this one now once we have this it means that once we run npm run dev we are expecting starting dev server so you can see what we have starting dev server so that's how anything you want to be running any command you want to run on the terminal in which once you run it on the terminal to take an effect 
that's what you put under this script all right so i'll just cancel this one for now we'll, we'll still come back to this now that's for our package.json file now of course if you remember we say we are building a node.js uh, we are building an application on node.js and we say we are using the express js framework all right so it means that first of all we even need to install our express framework now while building your application on node.js is of importance to always know or separate the dependency from the dev dependency now the dependency are those things that they are needed that's in your in your production environment for the code for your code to run properly even your production environment they all of them need to be installed for it to run properly why dev dependency are those things that they, they are not needed in your production they are only needed in your development for instance what we what we have this environment we are on now is our development environment because that's the environment in which we are building on all right all right so but for your production environment is the environment where you are going to deploy your application to all right so now since we are using express it means that express automatically is a dependency um this thing is a dependency all right it's not a dev dependency it's actually a dependency so now to install using uh to install a package right and register it as a dependency you either use npm install dash dash save the name of the uh, package or npm install name of the package dash dash save or you simply do npm install the name of the package let's say in this case you know it's express that we are installing so that is how you go about it so now here i'm going to do i'm going to install express so i'll do npm install express and then if you check inside of this package you can see that it has been updated dependency is now added and then inside of dependency we now have express now what this one means is that the version of express that is being installed is 4.19.2 now what this symbol means is that in a situation where we are deploying our application or in a situation where somebody else clone our application and the person wants to install all the in, in dependency here what is going to happen is that it's going to first check if there's any version that is more recent than this if there is it will go ahead and install that one if there is not it will install this version exactly so that is what this symbol means if this symbol were to be taken away it simply means that it will always install this version irrespective of whether there is a newer version of express or not but with this version now what it will do is that it will first attempt to it to it will check if there is a most recent version that is higher than this if there is it will install it if there is not it will install this exact version so that's how it works so now for us to start writing our application right the back end of our application the first thing we need to do you can see here you can find out that here the main we need an entry point for our application and what an entry point means is that where our application is going to be running from right so now from here just like i say some people actually make use of index.js some people use server.js but i in particular i'm going to be using app.js so make sure you are in this root uh this thing your main directory look at it your project directly directory right and then inside create a file i'm going to call it app.js that's the one i'm going to use for mine now also in this main file make sure you create another one called dot git ignore so in a situation where you want to be pushing your code to github and make sure you exclude this particular directory this folder so node underscore modules now the reason why you do that is so that if you are pushing to github this one will not be included in what you are going to be pushing because in essence is not actually needed in a way so so i'm going to cancel this and then back to what we have here now from what we have here i've explained this what it is we'll still come back to this where we are going to use something as a dev dependency we'll still come back to it so now first of all we need to import express and in importing express because already we have express in our environment because we just we are just we, we just finished installing it all right but the issue now is that because you can even check you can say 
npm express dash v that's so um express yes so you can even check the version of the express right but this just by the way now um back to what we have so now what we need to do here right now is to actually bring in express into our main application all right and how do we do that now we can do that in two ways either we use the esm which is which simply means ecma script module method of import or we simply use the cjs which is common js which is common java script method of import so for the egs method of import how it works is that well how it works is you actually use what we call we actually use what we call sorry you use the word import right what are we importing of course we are importing express right from what the name of our module is t express right you can actually say import give it another name but for the sake of consistency it's good to always give the modules you are you are importing the exact name while importing them is always good but if you like you can come here and say exp if you like yeah. so it means moving forward you keep on using exp but it's always advisable to use the full name while if you are importing using your common javascript or common js that's when you will now use something like this you have const express equal to require that's when you use your require keywords right so now irrespective of any uh, kind of import style you are choosing it's best you stick to just one right it's best to stick to one particular one now for this one i would have said let's use this one right but we are not going to use this one because this one does not really have issues now for you to use something like this right in your in your project you have to still modify your package.json you have to include something here and that's why we are going for this so that you see how to solve that issue all right so here now i'm going to i'll leave these ones here and then first of all I import my express so i'll do import express from express all right the next thing now is for us to initialize our express right so now to initialize express we're going to have we we'll have const app right equal to express so what we are doing here is that we are initializing express and then we are storing it inside of app so it means by initializing ex express and storing it inside application means this app now now have access to everything that is stored up uh, inside the express framework so we can access anything stored up inside our access uh, express framework yeah so that's how to initialize your express right good so now let's um let's let's go on so we are done with this initializing express uh, instance now of course we'll still come back to this express js middlewares yes for now we we'll still come back to it okay so we we'll still come back to this cross origin uh, resource sharing and now the fair the next thing or the first thing we need to know is okay how do we start our express js application because here we have initialized it the next thing is for us to start it you understand now to start running our our express js application we simply use app dot listen right and then give it a particular port number so now how do we now run this code to run this code now of course what is the name of our application the name of our application is app.js so we are going to use node and then the name of our application app.js if you like you can use app.js if you like you can still use just app it's, it will still recognize it so now you can see that we are having some errors so let's check what the errors are now you can see say warning to load an es module set type module in the package.json or use.mjs extension 
So you say cannot use import statement outside the module. So here now, if we if we would have used um uh this this here, was where is it? If we would have used common JS, right? We would we wouldn't have had this issue. But since what we are actually using here is our what's the name? Is the import statement? We need to indicate inside our package.json of type model uh, module just like what they, they they said here so it means that since we are using import and that's why i decided to use import so that you will see how to solve this kind of issues so we'll come to our package.json and then here anywhere you can add it anywhere so but me i'm going to add more here and then i'm going to set type to be module and save so now i'm going to run the same command and this time around you can see that actually our application is now running and how do we know that application is running we'll still get to that but right now our application is running all right is running so here okay so but let's let's confirm let's confirm something and see so we are running it at port what is the port we used okay we actually use port 3000 so why why we know that our application is actually running you can see it's telling us cannot get slash so how do we know now imagine if we change this port to like 4000 see what we are going to have of course there's no network site is not reachable so but and how do we know okay let's stop our application you see that port 4000 is not working so now let's stop our application right using control c and then let's change the port from 3000 to 4000 save it and then let's restart our application now let's go back and refresh this page so you can see now if you go back to another port let's say the former port which we use 3000 you can see it's telling us that there's no network so i'll take it back to 4000 so this alone is an indication that our our this thing server is running is working properly now the question is why is it showing us that cannot get slash now by default right what your browser does you know there are different uh http method i think i i i I talked about them here http method of app which is there's get there's post there's put there's delete there's option now by default your browser by default uses the get http method right it uses the get so now looking at what we have here our code we we are we initialize our server and we started running our server without actually uh getting it to route through this as you can see where is it let me open the browser without it getting to route through this our slash because this is slash slash simply means the root so we have not actually uh routed it through this uh slash through our root and here if let's say we want to add another part let's say a user right you can see it's telling us that there's no route within this user all right so i'll just i'll just leave it like this now what we are going to do is to take care of this now how do we take care of this or in other words to handle this now how do we handle this we'll come back to our app right and then here i'm now going to say app dot get because the method now we want to use is the get method and what the get method does is that it accepts although it accepts more than two things it can accept more than two but for now we'll be using two it accepts two things now what are those two things the route of course you can see that in this case the route here is this slash so the route here slash and then what it should do after what it should do once it comes in contact with this slash which is a function right now the function we take in by default we take in two parameters your request and your response req and res req simply means request res simply means response right so we have something like this now by entering inside of this by entering this one in our browser what we are doing is that we are requesting let's say you come to your browser and you say google.com right what you are what you have done here is to request for the website www.google.com so by entering this localhost at port 4000 what we are do, doing is that we are actually requesting so now since we are requesting just like how we did this right if we say google.com this is a request and then in return we got a response a response of what 
the main Google website. All right. So here too, we have made a request here, and then this one we have made this to handle the request of this at localhost, localhost at this port, then at this part. Now we we are expecting a response. Now what's going to be? How do we uh, send a response? We do res dot we send, and then we send. Let's say we send um, I love node js right let's say this is the reason so it simply means that anytime we enter our local host since we are now running our server anytime we enter our local host and on at this port which is the root what we should get in return is this thing written here which is what i love node.js so let's save it remember whether you refresh you will not get any changes we we'll have to come back here stop our server and then restart the server again now we'll go back and then do a refresh now we'll do a refresh so you can see we now have i love node.js now let's say we come back to this right and then we change this one to i love express js it makes my work easier right and save it you find out that even if we come back here and refresh you see there's nothing there's no changes why is there no changes because we we are already like we have we have to like stop our server and then rerun our server again for any change we make to be effective so you can see after restarting our server we refresh and then we got i love express js it makes my work easier so this is in a situation right let's now assume that what we actually want to do right what we are actually want to do is actually to send this as a json you know json uh -huh. let's say for instance what you want to do is to build an api right with this your backend so it means what you expected to be sending are uh, information in form of json now let's say we want to send in this let's say we want to send this one now as a json instead of just sending it as plain because as it is now this is more like a plain text right so let's say we want to send it in form of a json and not a plain text let's say we want to build an api so what we are going to do here is that instead of using send what we are going to be doing is json and then remember json you send in json using something like this for python they call it dictionary why for javascript they call it object and then of course you know a json always have a, a key and a value so this key now i'll just give it the name message right and then separated i have my key message and then i have my value both of them separated by by column right both of them inside this coily bra break uh, braces so i'll save now you find out that even if i refresh there will be no change i will have to come here stop my my server right and then restart it again so i'll come back here and refresh so you can see that what we now have here is a json right you can say either print pretty print pretty so what we have now is here is a json it means we have actually returned a json if we like here so we have actually returned just like i said we have actually returned a json here so depending on what you want to do are you returning it as a plain html or are you returning it as a json it all depends on what you are looking for or what you want all right so let's do something let's say now now you can see that in this our get this is what we are going to be getting let's assume we now want to do it in such a way by the time we print slash user it's going to display something you can see that it's telling us i cannot get this slash user why because despite the fact our server is running it does not have anything that is handling this slash user part all right so now we can come back to this our code using the same uh, process app dot get right now of course what is the part we want to deal with we want to deal with the user part so here the part is slash user and then what should happen if we have this slash user part of course we initialize our request and response uh, function Right now, we want it to res dot JSON. We want it to also send a JSON. Now, this time around, this JSON we are sending, right? We want it to send in a like full JSON where we have probably name, 
name now we can say okay name is Gideon right Gideon Bature right comma and then let's say age now age now we can say uh, we can say maybe 100 right and then uh, hobbies okay gender let's say gender male and then finally let's say hobbies hobbies right so hobbies you can make it to be a list right so we can say a coding you can say studying right yeah you can list all these things and then we are done so it means that once we enter this url sorry so it means that once we enter this url what we are expecting is to see all this information here that we have here but of course remember we have to restart our server so we have to stop it and then start it so now let's refresh so now you can see we have the same information not name gideon but today age 100 gender male hobbies we have this all right so so that is that is that now before we go further let's say imagine you are building an application for every change that you make and you want to like confirm the changes you made is it how every time we have to come and be restarting our server we stop it start it stop it start it that's where node more comes in now there's a package called nodemon and what nodemon helps you to do is it always listens for any changes in your code and then once you make any change it will restart your server so as you will not need to come and manually restart your server for every change you make now how do we get this nodemon up and running of course we install it using npm install because it's a node uh, uh, package module and then nodemon now if you remember what i was explaining where I talked about installing dependencies and dev dependencies. Now, Node-Mon is a dev dependency. You don't, you will not really need Node-Mon in your environment. All right, you only need Node-Mon in your in your development environment. You don't need it in your production. So for that, we are going to use dash dash save dash dev for it. Now you can see that we now have our dev dependency and inside we have node mode. I've explained what this is already. All right. So now how do we use node mode? Right? How do we use node mode? Now we have to come back to this script. Now you know I was explaining before. Remember, anytime we want to start uh, an app, this is our application, our app.js. We normally run node app, right? Now with this script we can take advantage of this script in such a way we don't need to always run node we can have our own separate command so we can say okay we want it to anytime we want to start our app right we just use the word keyword start right and then once we do use start what it should do is that it should run node app dot js for us so instead of we running node app here manually on this app terminal we can include it inside this our script part of our package.json with the key start right and then the command for it to actually start you understand so now we can now come here on our terminal and then run npm start sorry i made a mistake npm start so you can see that it has started you can see the same command that we use in starting we don't need to run it we just need to run this command so and it mustn't be start if i like i can decide to use another keyword i can say start or i can say uh node no not node this time around let's say i can say um def yes let me use def or instead start slash def all right and then anytime i do start dash def what you should do is that you should run node app dot js for me so now if we come here and then we run npm start dash dev you see that it is not working so it's not working because of any name other than start right we need to include run with it that's why you see for this test let's check test npm test 
So it means that anything aside test and start, any other command aside test and start, you have to add run for it to work. So for this start dash dev to work, we have to run npm run. We have to add run to it and then start dash dev. Now you can see that it has started our node application. All right, good. So now I want us to include something in our code, something that will tell us that our application have actually started running. How do we do that? We'll go back to our app.js. Now, inside of this app.listen, we'll create an anonymous function, right? And then this anonymous function, we'll tell it to console.log, right? Console.log, of course, is running at 4,000. So server running on port 4,000, all right? So now, but if by the time we start, npm run start dev, what is going to have is you can see server is running on port 4000 at least we we'll have a feedback that it has started running so back to what we have here now remember we are talking about node mon right we are talking about node mon so henceforth we don't want to be using node to run our application we want to be using node mon so that for every change we make we don't have to come and be restarting our server manually so here i will change it to node mon all right i'll change it to node mon so i'll cancel this and then I'm going to use npm start. Now you can see, now Nodemon is the one running our application. So now look at what we have. Let's go back to our code. Of course, what we have here, name, age, 100, mail, all right? And then when we refresh, you can see that it's still the same thing. Now let's change what we have here. Let's okay. Let's say we want to add, uh, sorry. Let's say we want to add something here right let's say uh user slash one right let's want to add user slash one so coming here coming to our code we are, we'll just copy this right and then we'll change we'll add slash one slash user slash one right to it and then this one will change the name let's say uh, uh good let's say abu rama good right let's say this one 45 let's say yes mail let's say this hunting hunting and let's say this camping yes camping hunting and camping all right so now you can see that for every change we make the server will keep on restarting so if we come back here now and we refresh you can see name aburama gold age 45 gender male hobbies so you can see that we don't need to go and be restarting our server manually all over again all right so take that uh, take that into uh, consideration so this is what we have for this video just like i said we we'll have subsequent videos more all right okay yes so remaining one other thing yes remaining one other thing so let's assume now that we want to we don't like you want to let's say uh give it a parameter yes we want to work with parameters you know parameters or parameters work for instance like for function parameters let's say we have a function just permit me to to open a new file here right and then let's call it test.js all right so let's say we want to create a function right you know we can say uh const um, or let me use the normal uh, function <laughs> so let's say we we'll say function add isn't it and then we'll say this function will take in two parameters which is x y right and then after taking these two parameters what you should do is console.log x plus y so now what we are trying to say here is that for these two things then these are all parameters to this function now when it comes to declaring the function right this one just like what we did here declaring the function you see that what you have actually placeholders for the parameters but by the time we want to call the function let's say add all right what we are going to use are the real values that's what we are going to use in calling the function by then we are calling the function isn't it so that is how function works so it's almost the same application here let's say now we want to do it in such a way we'll be getting our let's say by the time we enter this right it will not just 
display this for us you understand but instead it will also display that okay this is user one probably id user id it will display one why because it's one that will actually enter here and it mustn't be just user id you could you can apply it to other things too so here now we can create another one here right and this time around instead of just one here i'm going to put a placeholder which is id or instead let me use let me say user id all right so by placing this column before this user id what i'm trying to say is that what will come immediately whatsoever thing is coming immediately after user will definitely be taken as a parameter as a parameter of user id and since remember what i told you for everything we are entering inside this bar what we are doing is that we are making a request so it means that at the moment right now as it is what we are doing is we are making a request including the parameter for our request because we have stated it that anything that is coming immediately after user anything slash whatever thing that is following the slash will be taken as this as a parameter which in this case is a user id so here now it means that we can say const to get our value for our user id now right i told you we are we'll be making a request so we have a req and then to get the parameters right to get any parameter from your request you, you actually use the word params and then dot what is the name of the parameter you can see here we've, we na we've named it user.id so user.id so what will happen here is that it will take in whatsoever we put here whatsoever we attach our request to here it will take it and store it inside of this user.id now with this rest.json that's the response we're expecting i'm going to now do what we say i'm going to add it user id right or instead of user id i'll just put id so it means that whatsoever thing we entered here is going to store be stored here as the user id so now let's save and then let's refresh this okay sorry so sorry i think why it's not working is because of we already have this all right we already have this to handle this so let's change it instead of one here let's change it to let's say okay let's even change the whole information here so instead of abrama gold let's say let's just name it gold smith right gold smith adams here let's put it to be like 25 of course male or this time around let's use female so let's name it gray sears adams right so here we have female and then here we have singing right and probably reading all right so now you can see that of course we already will have the one handling one but by the time we put two now enter it will treat the two as a parameter so you can see id now is having two why because here is two this particular place where we say should be a parameter is two and if we like we can change it to if i we can even change it to a name let's we can change it to swe software engineering you can see that the id2 we take whatsoever that is coming in here as swe so that is how this particular uh, that's how to work with uh, parameter and if you decide self you can decide to say okay this will be your the user let's say user name the user name right so here the user name and then here too instead of this what we are going to have is the user name right so now we're not we're not going to have here so instead of this we're now going to put here we say gideon plus baturi okay i think he's not accepting plus so i'll just remove this plus uh why is it not user id is not defined okay 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 sorry username sorry this should be username too uh, i would have said right so now i'm going to enter i'm going to refresh mm. so we have this slash user 
mm -hmm. username request dot parameter username we have username uh -huh. name here should be given user okay there's sorry this one is not among so we have to remove it uh, it's no longer among so we save and then we go back and refresh so you can see name the name we give it here give you on uh, i'm not sure if we can actually add space to it okay wow beautiful so space actually worked you can see so if you like you can actually say uh maybe gideon bature you can add uh elx dash software engineering so you can see name elx software engineering so that's how you work with parameter inside of your node.js while using express application so now we're able to cover so in our next video we'll be looking at this our model view controller or model view and we'll also be looking at other things like cross origin reference we'll also be looking at other things like middlewares yes and then also the structure of an express application so i hope this video is as clear as possible but in case it's not you have any question please you can ask on the comment section i believe there are many people that will be willing to respond and also i'll be watching out for your questions or any issues so i can answer in the comment section all right so have a great day thank you and please don't forget to like share and also subscribe thank you